This video is to demonstrate how to permanently repair the infamous slimline Grover tuners commonly found on vintage Rickenbacker bases. These come in a wavy key and a flat key variant, and this process is identical for both of them. To repair these, we're going to replace the press fit pins with screws. This provides the advantages of them never falling apart, and if you ever need to switch the key to the other side, all you have to do is unscrew the back plate and then flip the key to the other side. There are a lot of tools involved in this process and quite a bit of precision. So if this is your first time using some of these tools, I would highly recommend finding a skilled machinist to help or do the job for you. I have a list of tools and supplies needed in the video description. There are probably better ways to do this process that are even cleaner and more precise, but these are the tools I have on hand and at this point I've rescued over a dozen of these so I know the process works well. The first step is to dismantle the tuner. No going back at this point, so if you're uncomfortable with this whole process, it's time to find some skilled help. If the tuner is still together, do the unthinkable and pry it open. This can take some significant work. Wiggle the key back and forth, and frequently turning the key so that you aren't constantly bending it in one direction so you don't bend the shaft. Once you have some separation between the casing and plate, stick something flat in there and gently pry, working your way around. Be firm yet gentle and constantly moving around the casing so you don't overwork one part. Don't use anything too thick or rough yet as you'll scratch the chrome. This can take a significant amount of time. Keep at it and be patient. Once the tuner is open, clean out the old grease. It will be easier to work with if there's no grease inside and also prevents a bunch of metal shavings from sticking inside. Wipe up big globs with a paper towel or use a screwdriver and scoop some of it out. Once it's relatively clear, use mineral spirits and a microfiber cloth and thoroughly go through all the pieces until it's clean. Don't cut yourself on the grooves and teeth of the keys and gears, sometimes they can be sharp. Now that they're clean, use the metal file to make sure the pins are flat. A lot of tuners I've come across have been spleened at some point in time, which is a poor way to fix these tuners, as it usually doesn't last. File until they're flat. Use the center punch to make a tiny divot perfectly in the middle of each of those pins, but don't fully punch yet. If the tiny divot you made isn't perfectly in the middle, file it flat again and make another tiny divot until you have it perfectly in the center. Once the divot is perfectly centered, feel free to use the center punch and make the full punch. I highly recommend making some sort of jig to help hold the tuner flat and solidly in place while you drill. It's not necessary, but it makes the job easier and cleaner. I made mine out of a few random pieces of wood I found around the shop. We're ready to drill now. Take the drill bit and mount it in the chuck of your drill press. Make sure the table is level. I set the table height so that there is barely clearance between the bit and the post you're drilling into. Set the drill stop so that it drills about 2-3 to three millimeters longer than the screws. Eyeball it on the side of the drill to ensure it drills beyond the screw length. If you don't drill deep enough, you won't be able to re-drill after the hole is tapped and you'll ruin the threads. But if you drill too deep, you'll drill through the tuner. Take your time and line up the bit with the center punch, making sure it's going straight down. Add some tap grease and start drilling in each pin. Drill a little bit at a time, then back out a little bit, and then go back for more. Repeat the process for all four posts. After you drill, countersink the back plate just enough so the screw head sits flush against the backing or sitting a little bit below. You can pull the back plate off and test to see how deep your countersink is as much as you need because once you go too far with the countersink, you can't go back. You may need to remove the screw holding the plate on the jig closest to the hole that you're working on as the countersink sometimes catches that screw. Once they're fully drilled, pull apart the casing and use a pair of side snippers to cut the remaining part of that post off, and you'll be left with holes flush against the backing.
After drilling, I like to clean the tuner again. Knock the casing against the table to knock some filings out of the hole, then flush with isopropyl alcohol to ensure the holes are clear for tapping. Now you're ready to thread the holes. Mount the tap in a T handle, add a little tap grease, and start tapping the hole, ensuring you're going straight down. When you feel it start to cut, crank it about a half turn and then back out a little bit. Continue to cut with another one third or half turn, then back out just a bit and keep doing this until the tap bottoms out in the hole. Once you feel serious resistance at the bottom, don't force it, you'll ruin the threads. Back out entirely, flush with isopropyl alcohol, and knock out any loose filings. Clean the tap and go at each hole again with some fresh grease. You can usually get a few more turns at the very end before it bottoms out. Again, once you feel some serious resistance, don't force it as you're going to ruin the threads. Once you're done tapping the holes, flush again with isopropyl alcohol to ensure there are no shavings left in the holes. Hint, tap one of the holes further away from the key first. Once you're done tapping it, screw a screw in with the back plate on to ensure the holes were drilled deep enough. If it is not deep enough, this is your chance to drill the other holes a little bit deeper. The tuner will still hold together fine with three screws in, the most important two holes being the two closest to the key. Add a healthy amount of grease to the gears in all parts where there may be friction. Turn the key to work the grease in and add more as necessary. Make sure the key is oriented the correct way and then assemble your tuner. Add a bit of thread lock to each screw and then put it all together. You're almost done. Give the exterior a final wipe down with a clean microfiber cloth and you're ready to put it on your base.